Hi and welcome to this next video in our probability series. In this video, we are going to step boldly into matric probability, looking at the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle looks at calculating the number of ways, combinations or arrangements for possible outcomes in particular scenarios. Let's consider the following options for a meal as an example to start with. So two drinks, three main courses and two desserts. And the question is, how many possible combinations are there? Let's have a look at this information displayed as a tree diagram first. So we have two drinks, then three main courses, and then two desserts, which means we get 12 outcomes altogether. This example is still more or less manageable as a tree diagram, but the tree diagram can tend to get quite cumbersome if there are more options to consider. And so let's look at using the counting principle instead for this example. Before we go to the example itself, let's look at what the fundamental counting principle is first. Well, if successive choices like our drinks, mains and dessert options, are made from however many options, then the number of combined options is the product, as shown here. And so this principle allows us to perform simple calculations when determining the total number of options without having to draw tree diagrams each time. Let's think back now to the menu example, where our options were two drinks, three mains and two desserts. If we now use the fundamental counting principle to find the number of combinations, we go 2 times 3 times 2, and the answer of 12 correlates with the 12 combinations we got using the tree diagram. This is the more formal approach, but we do encourage a combination of formal and a logical approach, using diagrams even where helpful, as opposed to getting hooked on always feeling the need to use formulae. Let's expand our thinking now on the number of combinations. If we again consider our same meal options, we see having two choices, then three choices, then two choices, that the number of possible meal combinations is two times three times two, which equals 12. What if there had been three drinks, four main courses and two desserts? Well, then instead of a cumbersome tree diagram, which you can offer yourself a moment to picture in your head, we rather calculate the number of possible combinations using the fundamental counting principle, three times four times two, and this gives us 24 possible combinations in this scenario. What about arranging people? Well, let's start by looking at arranging five people in a row. So here we have our five people and our five slots, and so we have five people to choose from to fill the first slot. Then we have four people left to choose from to fill the second slot. Then three people to choose from to fill the third slot and so on. And so arranging five people in a row, we have five choices for the first slot, four for the second, three for the third, two for the fourth and one for the fifth. And so the number of ways of arranging five people in a row is five times four times three times two times one. And this is 120. We can write this product like this. And we call this factorial notation and we say five factorial. So the number of ways to arrange five people is five factorial. Let's have a more formal look at factorial notation before we move on to make sure you are fully comfortable with it. The theory says that a factorial of a positive integer, let's say n, is the product of all the positive integers smaller or equal to it, n in this case. And so here it is written out in general form in terms of n. We can see this applied if we consider our example with 5 factorial, that we have 5 times 5 minus 1, which is 4, then 5 minus 2, which is 3, then 5 minus 3, which is 2, then 5 minus 4, which is 1. And the best news of all is there is a factorial button on the calculator, so you don't have to be working these out in your head. 
maybe even pause the video for a moment to find this button on your calculator and test it out. Let's go straight into an example now. This example is of arranging people where certain prescribed conditions are given with the arrangements. So the question says, in a team of seven, there is one set of triplets. As they line up for their match, what is the probability that the triplets stand next to each other? So because of the definition of probability, this is a three-step process. First, we have to find the total number of arrangements. In other words, the total number of ways the seven team members could be standing in their line. Then we have to find the number of arrangements with the triplets standing together. And then once we found both of these, we can calculate the probability that the triplets stand next to each other in the line. So, to find the total number of arrangements of the team, there are seven members in the team, and so the total number of arrangements is seven factorial, which is 5,040. Remember to use your calculator for this. Then, to find the number of arrangements with the triplets standing next to each other, let's create seven slots to represent each team member's place in the line. The question doesn't say anything about where in the line the triplets must be, which means they could be first, or second, or third, or fourth, or fifth. And so let's select any three slots together to represent their position in the line. Then, next we need to consider that the triplets have a certain number of arrangements within themselves. And so because there are three of them, the number of ways they can be arranged amongst themselves is three factorial. Now we consider the triplets standing next to each other as occupying one slot, which means altogether there are now five slots which have five factorial number of ways of being arranged. And so to find the number of arrangements with the triplets together, we need to times three factorial by five factorial, and this gives us 720. We now have the information we need in order to calculate the probability of the triplets standing next to each other. And this is then 720 divided by 5040, which simplifies to 1 over 7. Let's have a look now at an example of arranging books on a shelf. So here we have that there are five different books, of which three are maths and two science. And we are being asked what the probability is of arranging them such that all the maths books are together and all the science books are together. Again here, because of the definition of probability, we have a three-step process. First, we calculate the number of ways in total of arranging five books on a shelf. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this now, that this is five factorial. Then we need to find how many ways there are of arranging these five books on a shelf such that the maths books are together and the science books are together. First, we see that the total number of books is five, and so we create five slots to represent the position of each book. Then we group the three maths books together. Let's put them first for now. And that means we can group these two for the science books. Now we have to consider that the three maths books can be arranged amongst themselves, and that will be three factorial ways. And the same is true for the science books, and for them it's two factorial ways. Then they didn't specify which set of books must be on the left, and so we need to include that either it's maths books then science books, or science books then maths books. So there are two factorial options of arranging the groupings of books. So then in total, the number of ways of arranging this particular set of books with this criteria is 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial, which is 24. Now the third part of the three-part process is to find the probability that the books will be arranged in this way. And here we take the number of arrangements according to the grouping requirements over the total number of ways the five books can be arranged, and this gives a probability of a fifth. Thank you for watching this first video on the fundamental counting principle. It's definitely worth, at this point, finding some similar questions in our study guides to get comfortable with this part of probability in smaller chunks. And then when you're ready, our next video in this series looks at further categories of fundamental counting principle questions. 
Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.